All right, this is gonna be a bunch of videos stitched together. I'm gonna try and figure out how to take apart this wheel module. This is a Roomba model, 650. This is a right wheel module. Um, apart from them being mirror images, they seem to be pretty same, pretty much the same between left and right. Um, I've been getting an Air 10, which could be from a variety of things, but this is this room by the second hand to me, and it's pretty dirty and all the cracks and crevices. And when I put the shop back up on this gap here, you can see it pulling out, trying to pull out clumps of stuff. Um, so I don't know that this needs to be taken apart, but I'm going to do it. Try and clean that out in there. Some kind of gear drive. Um, for those of you who don't, I mean, I only know the basics, but this is the motor, so it's driving some sort of re reduction gear in there. Um, it's probably got, uh, from what I understand, it's got some kind of sensor, it tells it how fast the wheel's turning, that kind of thing. Um, never been inside this before, so I'm gonna, um, take it apart in steps and, uh, I'm going to break this video up as I sort of try and figure out what's going on from one step to the next. I'm going to stop the video. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is just, um, like I say, I'm going to stop this. But I'm going to, it looks like this this blue shell should come apart. So I'm going to do that. See what's inside there. Okay, uh, I just loosened the three shells on that screw, um, three screws on that shell. And uh, as soon as it came loose, it's evident that uh, the spring that's, that pulls the wheel up and down has it's, it's got a lot of tension and uh, it may actually be too late for me, but um, this circuit board, this plug there um, may have gotten sheared off. Anyway, before you get into this, you want to make sure and un, uh, undo that spring. You got to take the spring tension off. Um, and the way this is designed with this spring coming into this hole here, I kind of gather that they expect it to be done from this end. Um, it's under quite a bit of tension for considering it's just a little floor cleaning robot. So I'm not positive uh, whether this tool I've got in my hand is going to be adequate. Get that screw out of the way. But definitely you want to do this before you take those screws out. Like I say, uh, good likelihood of messing up the um, electronics in the module, and in that case, it'll be toast for sure. <clears throat> All right, so I'm not sure if that was how. The room of folks intended to be done, but I, I'm, I undid it from that front end there. Um, and this gives us sort of two halves with this circuit board in between them. Circuit board looks like it's pinned in place, so I don't know. Mm. I'm not sure that the, what I want to do is get this this side apart. Um, I believe, but I'm not sure, that the wheel needs to be removed from the <clears throat> from the blue housing. Looks like this pivot pin should this pivot pin here. Um, I'm gonna see if I can press that out. I wish I didn't have to do that. And you can get at these screws inside. Uh, let's just do that. All right, I'm not going to push that pin out unless I. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to. You can see that the 
the seam where these two pieces come together. And I don't see, even with the screws out, that those are going to clear without first removing this, this pin and getting this out of the blue shell. So uh, I'm going to stop the video again and I'll come back with uh, once I've got an idea of how to get that pin out. I suppose I can just drive it out with a punch, but given this is all plastic, I'm not so sure. Okay, I'm back. Took a little bit of a look at this. Um, I actually put one of the screws back in to hold these two halves of that blue shell together. <clears throat> I'm paranoid that uh, the wires in there are going to get broken if they're not already broken from my first uh, ex popping it open with that spring still in place. So um, <clears throat> this is a 1 8 inch punch. Um, I just set it up on top of here um, and see from the, this is the left side one, how this pivot shaft is up a little higher. I just gave it a tap to see if it was going to work and it started moving right away. So, so you can see that shaft is coming out the bottom. Like I say, one inch, one eighth inch punch and just driving it down and it's coming right out. Um, Try and set it up on something here. My punch isn't really long enough to drive this out, but I'm hoping that uh, I can pull it out the rest of the way here. Sorry for the dead air. Um, This is going to work fine. No, don't need to pull that all the way out, but it's out. Alright, so I'm going to go back and uh, take this one screw back out and it holds the two sides of the shells together. screw back out. So now we've got um, a little more access. These wires are still pretty sketchy there. I don't want to don't want to pull them those too hard. So this shell now well, there's one, two screws there. They almost certainly hold the motor into the um, wheel. It looks like maybe the best thing is to try and get the wheel off, uh, the motor off the wheel first, so that we don't have to keep fighting with these wires for the rest of this. I'm holding my finger on the back of it so it doesn't try and drop off. Um, there go the wheel by the motor screws. This white. So that sort of slips in there from the end. Let's take a look at this. So, wires come off the motor. There's a guide and a gap, and then they're twisted to keep themselves together, and then they're set in this little recess. <clears throat> and this white piece is supposed to be a keeper that keeps them in place. Um, it looks like it slides in from back like that. So probably gonna need that for future reference, putting this back together. Let's see if we can get this wire out of here. Alright. 
So there's the drive motor in the blue housing separated from the actual wheel and gear. So I'm just going to leave that there. Four screws on the side of the shell and we should be at least looking at the inside. I'm still not certain how we're going to see the gears that work. I'm still not certain that we will see the gears inside here. They seem like they're on the back side of that inner shell. It's tight. This is all a mystery to me. So but I looked around a little bit on YouTube and I didn't see anybody having done this before. So. Alright, so that is not what I was hoping to get into. But it is interesting. Okay, so the fuzz that I've been sucking out with the vacuum is actually not part of this little gear chamber. It's not coming from the little gear chamber. And the reason I was wondering whether I was going to actually see that by opening this up is because the wheel, like you can tell there's something embossed here on the wheel on the inside. And then this pin. So I guess the next thing I'm going to try and do is try driving this pin down. Let's we'll see if that will come out of the shell. Um, That's actually open there. The side shell. But it's not open enough for this 1 8 inch punch to go through. So, because otherwise, if it was, I could just put this back on there and drive it through. I suppose if you have a smaller punch, you can try this without. Alright, so I'm going to stop the video again and um, gonna see if I can drive this down and get this wheel off of here. That's what I want to do. I want to get the rubber wheel off the gear case. Alright, I'm back just quickly. So, uh, I took out the, the gears. They just are sitting, spinning freely on these three pins. Um, this gear that drives the wheel is tight on the shaft. That's what enables it to drive the wheel. And I tried turning it over and putting a punch on it and trying to punch down in this direction, but it's not doing anything with some relatively solid taps. Kind of looks like this shaft is set in a piece of metal there that's soon baked into the wheel. So um, I have a feeling that this shaft is not really intended to separate from this little metal hub. And I'm guessing that the wheel assembly with the shaft protruding was just pushed through this white gear. Um, so ideally, I would like to punch it back down through the white gear, but there's not really a good way to support this wheel. Um, obviously, if, I, if it's sitting on something, it's not going to go anywhere. So, um, because the whole wheel and shaft together need to go down. So, uh, or I need to be able to prise up the gear off the shaft. I'm not confident that uh, I'm going to have a solution for this. But I'm going to take a look at it for a bit. And I'll be back. Alright, well I've given up. I don't think that uh, it's going to be possible to pull that wheel off there. Um, it needs the world's smallest little gear puller to pull that gear off, and I don't think that's going to happen. So, I'm going to reassemble these gears. Um, obviously, the one is fixed in place. There's one that's a two-level gear with large teeth. That's going to go drop in there. There's another two-level gear with small teeth on the large diameter and big teeth on the inner diameter um, and then there's another small gear reducing gear with small teeth on both diameters 
and uh, I think it went like that, and like that. Okay, so the motor can spin and drive those all the way up. So at this point, I'm just going to put this thing back together. Um, now that I see how it goes together with these gears kind of encased in this gear case, I don't think that lint, hair, stuff like that, unless it's just massive, that's in the back side of this wheel, it's going to produce enough friction to affect how the thing runs. So given that I can't get it apart, that's my theory. Um, so this other side of the gear case goes back on. Um, it's got a bunch of things that got to line up with it, so take your time. It's got to fit over the back side of all those. Turn those screws backwards, counterclockwise, until you feel them with a little bit of downward pressure. Until you feel them drop in to the, you can even hear it and click a little bit, um, to the threads that were cut the first time. You don't want to recut threads. Not that it probably would matter in this, but something you're going to take apart a bunch of times. You definitely don't want to be cutting new threads each time because after a while you'll be... I have no threads. All right, so there's those. Didn't pay attention to which side the wires came off the motor. There's the two screw holes. <clears throat> the wires are lined up with one of them. It looks like that should be the one that's up here facing all this nonsense. Turn this around. These two are machine screws. They're not made for cutting threads, so it's only two like that. Again, you want to go backwards a tiny bit until you feel them drop in. Don't want to be cross threading anything. wires come up and around and in this recess it's kind of tight there right where it sort of exits you want to be careful with these wires because they're probably pretty fine inside I hope that this thing functions when it's put back together Getting this back together here is a little bit of a puzzle, but I think getting the spring back on is going to be the big mystery. Why is that? I guess that screw never got completely removed. I'm not sure why that's still attached there. Alright, so. There's a spring anchor, it's going to sit back in this hole. That looks pretty good. And then this is our pivot shell. 
think I'm actually going to put this all back together and then put the pin in and then put the spring on. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the clamshell's back together. There's three screws. One, two, three that hold it together. Now we've got to put the pin back in for the pivot. Right here. But I'm gonna do that off camera. Alright, so I think I figured out that probably the simplest way to do this. This and you gotta be careful because you don't want to bust that little tab off, but I'm just gonna just gently drive it like that. So that's got us through here and here, and now it's got to line up with the opposite side. But I think we can still probably continue the way we were. All right. So the pivot pin's back in. Probably the easiest thing of the whole thing. Now for the spring which ought to be uh, a little bit of a fight. Okay, what I've done is I've got a piece of nylon ribbon that was left over from some package. And I threaded it through one end of the loop on this spring. And I'm gonna lift that wheel out of the way. Try and get this spring through there. onto the pin down here and use the ribbon to stretch it. And I'll be back. Okay, that worked like a charm. Spring is threaded the spring down there, hooked this left end, then used the ribbon to stretch it. Um, pull it back. I had held the wheel down so I could see what was going on here. And just used the ribbon to stretch the spring. Probably something more modest than this big piece of ribbon would work, work better. Um, perhaps dental floss. And then what you want to do is get this out without um, unhooking the spring. And I think at this point I'm going to just cut this ribbon off. Okay, so that's done. Finally got the ribbon off the end of that. <clears throat> Definitely um, I would try something more, uh, something smaller, like a piece of floss or some sort of cord. That ribbon was too big. But anyway, <clears throat> it worked fine for doing what it was supposed to do. So I'm going to put the Roomba back together and um, we'll see. Uh, hopefully it still works. Out. An initial disassembly of this was not the best, but I didn't see any broken wires in there. So, um, And the reason it wasn't the best was because I'd, that spring needs to be taken off first. That's like the very first thing to do. Otherwise, there's too much tension when it starts getting uh, taken apart and uh, pieces are uh, likely to snap open and break something electronic there. Alright, here's the room ball back together. And time will tell whether the uh, disassembly made any difference with this other pen, but it's working. <clears throat> Probably working better. 